if if we if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor. You're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I I don't or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay, Don Lemon. <laughs> Part of me didn't want to even talk about this today because it's so funny. No one cares nah. about Don Lemon anymore. Just let him go away. I know. Uh, but I will say this. I've seen this with a lot of people who are on mainstream networks, you know, whether it's CNN, whether it's Fox News, MSNBC, uh, whether it's, you know, ABC. Um, for example, there are people like at The View um, who have tried to make these things work online, their content, and you just they're worse off for having done it. Right. When you don't have an entire crew of makeup, of writers, of the talking points that are given to you, of commercial breaks. So you have this this safety net of never having to discuss something for longer than six minutes. They say, oh, you know what, po- I'm going to go into podcasting. Good luck. And it's like you are worse <laughs> off for people seeing that contrast. There are some who do it well. For example, uh, Jedediah Diabila. I know she was I, I know at Fox News for a while and she was on The View. And uh, she does some really good stuff out there now. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples. Um, Megan Kelly has done, obviously, Kelly sure, pretty well yeah. for herself and uh, her show. Work. She's still kind of doing Sirius XM, though, so there's yeah. some support. But um, sometimes you see someone and say, oh, okay, when they're unfiltered, they're better. And sometimes you see someone unfiltered and say, oh, they were using someone else's talking points. Guess which one to, Don Lemon is. Or if they have to deal with the comment section for the first time. Yeah, exactly. Oof. I love that you said the makeup part, because when the Don Lemon video plays, you'll understand why. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> looks horrific. It's like a, he looks like he's a member of a civil rights turtle club. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he looks like a dog that just got uh, cosmetic <laughs> surgery. <laughs> it's like a dog who just got came back from the groomer. Face lift, yeah. <laughs> so this was an interview, and more importantly, Don Lemon does not understand the point that Elon Musk is making. And again, this is a point that Don Lemon, there's such a disconnect between the Don Lemons of the world um, and remember the Brian, Brian Stelter? Brian Stelter. Stelter. Yeah. Was it Brian Stelter? It's white, yeah. I was just thinking of Brian Setzer. It was Brian Stelter. That's Setzer, right. what? That's how long ago it's been. Brian Stelter doesn't understand. You have people at MSNBC. They're so disconnected from you, the average American. If I were to say to you, hey, when you are uh, going to go under the knife on an operating uh, table, you want the best doctor possible. You want to know that that doctor is as qualified as possible. Race, gender is likely the furthest thing from your mind. you probably go, sure. Don Lemon doesn't have a chip in his brain to compute that. So here he is with Elon Musk talking about race and DEI in medicine. I believe that it, uh, if, if, we, if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor. You're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I, I don't or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay. <laughs> most, doctors, okay. most doctors now are white. And... There are lots of mistakes in medicine, so you're saying that... So just make them all black guys. My doctors are have bad medical care? I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to DEI, because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. Pause the really quickly. Doctors That's go, the reverse Nirvana fallacy. That's the, hey, well, yeah. it hasn't happened yet, so let's just upend, let's just upend everything. That's the problem with a lot of, uh, uh, well, the entire progressive movement. Mm-hmm. It's destroy for the sake of destruction with no actual solution in place. You just saw it with the border. Well, so uh, you know, we haven't seen it yet. So, wouldn't the solution just be replace all the white doctors with black doctors? No. Continue. White? Are you saying that? D- and there are still these inequities, right? And there's and people still there are still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm just, I, I'm very very basically saying that if we lower standards uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or you know, an oncologist or something where that where the the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake, causes someone to die, then the, the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. So, so well, we'll go through this point by point. First, you know, Dylan says most doctors are white. Ah, forgot about Dre, and that's something that we thought he would know. Well, he should know better. That's <laughs> true. That was more of an honorary yeah title. Now. <laughs> <laughs> This is a tough one. (laughs) DEI is a relatively new thing. This is a tough one. You know? Um, uh, I I don't know at what point you're you're not, like, retarded, but you're functionally retarded. I don't know, (laughs) legally. This is why I was... I was conflicted about doing this segment, because no one likes to see you beat up on a retard. (laughs) Uh, It's bad for business. Yeah, it's bad for business. 
it's clear that Don Lemon does not hit the like. Let's start with this. Hit the like button if you're glad that Elon fired Don Lemon's ass. Now, <laughs> let's continue. Before we get to the statistics, Don Lemon also showed that he does not understand the hypotheticals. A surgeon in training is asked to do it a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay, I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. If we lower standards, people, people will die. <laughs> but why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened because I could say, you know, I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower those standards. Obviously. <laughs> That's the, whole the obvious answer. <laughs> they do this all the time. No, the left. They say, well, it hasn't happened yet. Well, it's, it's the same thing with like election stuff. Could Not to muddy that, the yeah. waters a little bit, but it's like, oh, well, we don't have any evidence that this stuff has happened. So why prepare? OK, well, this bank has never been robbed. Maybe right. we shouldn't have counters. Maybe exactly. we shouldn't have gates. Maybe we shouldn't have bulletproof glass. And of, of course, this interview has made international headlines uh, everywhere. And that's something that everyone that's a good Photoshop. Now, let me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true because it hasn't happened yet. Now, that is true. So I cannot tell you that what I'm about to present is uh definitive as to how DEI would affect performance in the medical field. But we have to make an inference based on the data that we have. Yeah. All right. So let me give you an example. Uh, black Americans, and of course, black Americans are the primary beneficiary of affirmative action right in college. Uh, they drop out of STEM fields once they're in college at almost two times the rate of everyone else. Wow. So the overall dropout rate is 35 percent. The black STEM field dropout rate is 65%. And Thomas Sowell has talked about this. We've discussed it. When you put someone, you place someone into a program for which they are not qualified in a way that can be quantified, right, as far as test scores, as far as effectively their resume going into college, um, you're actually harming them by putting them at a disadvantage competitively. Right. And then that ends up harming them through wasted time. So two times the dropout rate. Now, this would be, for an example, let's say that's in medical school. Okay, two times the dropout rate. If you apply affirmative action in the professional space, meaning no longer education, but now you're applying it so they are getting jobs, the inference would be they would be more likely to have a two times failure rate to some degree uh, than everyone else. The failure rate there involves you dying. It's kind of a big deal. A little bit. Get into the STEM field, get into med Twice the dropout rate in medical school if it's affirmative action. Apply affirmative action to the actual medical office, making an inference, that's not a, you could die. Or at least get sick. You could end up looking like Don Lemon. That's true. Nobody wants to look like Don Lemon. But don't think that medical mistakes are not a big factor. It's the third leading cause of death in the United States. Sure. Like, this is massive. So if you screw with the third leading cause, you'll probably make it the first leading cause. Exactly. The primary Leading cause of death. So before we get to some of these facts, again, what Elon Musk is saying is, no, no, hold on a second. We're just saying, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You need to be the best person for the job. And then Don Lemon says, well, you still have a lot of a lot of issues in the medical field. Okay, so your solution is more black people. Um, let me provide other <laughs> solutions. And by the way, I'm not saying less black people. Um, better qualifications and standards. Now. You or guys can comment same. below. I heard there's just now. less white people. That's what I heard it as. Yes, less white. He people. wants more Indian and Asian doctors. I'm all for it. Mm, not the best <laughs> bedside manner. <laughs> Your baby die. Your baby go don't die. Be adult. We all have things happen to us. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've had quite a Say few nicely, Asian doc. doctors. Come on. And by the way, my doctor. You guys have had Dr. Choi. Yeah. It's tremendous. But he was talking. He's like, many of these people. They come from countries. It's not the same. They go, want to get good job, become doctor. Not like American kids say. You know, I want to help kids. <laughs> they say make money. But I say these are people. They have feelings. They come in scared. I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'm just saying. So, uh, solution: more black people, or solution: higher standards. You comment. You can comment. That's based on. This is why when people say, I take everything on an issue by issue basis. Sure, absolutely. You should take into account the data of the issue. But this is a fundamental difference in worldview. He uses the word inequities. Okay. This is the fundamental difference in worldview. Your solution is going to automatically be more black people versus the solution, by the way, of people like Thomas Sowell, who happens to be black, the solution of better standards. Okay? That's the solution because inequity, inequality. You cannot support equality and support forced equity, to be clear. 
People will say it's not about equality, it's about equity. Equality is about ensuring that everyone has the same opportunity. Equity is ensuring, is, is mandating outcomes through the force of the government, through the iron fist of the government. Equality, freedom, equity, fascism. You can dress it up however you want. No, no, I'm, I'm enforcing equity in the name of black people. It doesn't matter. You're try you are rigging the system. You cannot be a freedom-supporting American who believes in equal opportunity for all while saying you want to correct equities, inequities through the government. It's not possible. Also, I look at this issue, and I'll give you some stats, and I see a beautiful thing when you look at the statistics regarding um, the race of doctors in this country. Let me give you some examples here. Here's, uh, let's go through some key facts here. Number one, he talks about the race of the doctors. Okay. In 2021, there were about 950,000 doctors in the United States of America. Okay. Uh, whites made up 63%. So he said most doctors, are, eh, I guess that's true, white Asians made up 20%. They make up about 3% of the population. Hispanics, 6.9%. Blacks, 5.7%. So are black people underrepresented? Well, sure. Are Asian Americans overrepresented? Absolutely. Now, I wouldn't say overrepresented, meaning that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It means that there are more Asians uh, in comparison to their population portion here in America, their percent of the population, than in many other professions, which tells me, hey, that means that Asians, who are a smaller minority than black Americans, and by the way, have been discriminated against, I don't know if you know about World War II, can become doctors at a higher rate than white people. By the way, don't know if you know this, Jews have been persecuted in this country at one point in time. A lot of Jewish doctors that would fold into white. Hey, you've been persecuted, you are a minority in this country, but there is a higher percentage of your minority population being represented in the medical fields, which means that you can do it. I, we're looking at the exact same statistics. Let me give you some new ones. In 2023, 2024, uh, those being enrolled, accepted into medical schools, white, 41%, Asian, 26%, Hispanic, 6%, black, 8%. Here's an interesting thing right there. The white numbers are going down. Surprise. The Asian numbers are going up. That actually is a surprise. So the first one was sarcastic. The second one is surprising considering that they literally have guards in front of Harvard going, no Asians, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hispanic, black, still the same percentage. Black went up a little. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. But I, this is one of those things that I don't care. Unless it's 100% one and zero of all the rest of them, then I really don't care. I just want the most qualified people. And by the way, why do you think every single job field or profession has to be equally represented by race? It doesn't. Some races choose not to go into a field specifically more than others. Like Asians becoming doctors, maybe it's drilled into them as kids. Hey, become a doctor. That's the way you become successful. Maybe in other races, it's, hey, become another kind of professional. Become a sports star. Become a singer. Be whatever. That's what success looks like. That's fine. I don't care. I just want somebody that doesn't kill me when I get a colonoscopy. Right. I'm just saying it should be a simple procedure. And you're at that age. You have you have them coming up. I mean, thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. Coming all the way up. Yep. Ah. Asshole. Yes. By the way, they're not supposed to use a periscope, just so you know. <laughs> Probably have a conversation with your clinic. Do some prison time, Doc. So, uh, here's another fact for you, that medicine is, of course, becoming more woke. And I would ask you to, to answer this. Does anyone out there actually believe um, that there is a discrimination against black people in the medical field in the United States today where they cannot get jobs? Or do you think it's more likely that they, of course, would readily accept a black doctor all things being equal, above a white doctor or an Asian doctor. Comment below. That's you making an inference. But let me give you some stats. The major medical schools right now across this country, they do emphasize DEI. Again, diversity, equ equity, inclusion, just to yeah. be clear. UCLA, they require that med students take DEI classes. Ugh. Because that's important oh, for an anesthesiologist. So pull it back up. What the name of the class? Structural Racism and Health Equity. Mm-hmm. University of Minnesota's uh, School of Public Health, they, they actually, they post a land acknowledgement statement <laughs> here. What? <laughs> what is that? For the Dakota people, I'm sure they're, yeah, I'm sure that wow. it just makes up for everything. <laughs> they're fine with it. How does this help with my acid reflux? <laughs> yeah. They're not trying to fix that. No, one. they're not that trying to fix that one. Meaningless things ever. They're trying to make sure that... Uh, I hope that's on a test. Yeah. But we made the right building between, after yeah. your people. Yes. <laughs> what? Even though some of them are cannibals. Now, sure. and, and, and Ben Shapiro actually did some great work and uncovered um, that there was this effort, actually, to actively stop hiring white male surgeons 
at uh, the Duke University School of Medicine. So here is, I believe we have a clip. Uh, this is Duke surgical resident Vignesh Rahman, part of that 26%, uh, bemoaning, <laughs> having to treat conservative patients. You know, the thing is, we are in the South, right? And unlike a lot of the like hospitals in the Northeast or in the West, we serve a very Southern population. This is not a VIP hospital. People are not like flying in from Qatar to get treated here. We treat patients who are just from the community in the South. And not yes, my important. heart sinks every time I go into a room and I watch them watching Fox News, or they have a MAGA hat on, yeah. or they're wearing a Confederate belt. Move right? to the Northeast I, then. These are the patients that we treat. But Geraldine, I, I will say that the one very good thing about the South that I enjoy is exactly what I alluded to earlier, is that we don't treat VIPs. We treat people from our community. And our community, has, as Auri explained, is majority non-white. And it is wonderful to treat such a diverse group of people in every regard. And that's not an experience that I had in my sabais in other places uh, or that my friends have training in other programs. Okay. I don't like him. Why would that be a good yeah. or a bad thing? Treating, tr treating a diverse community versus treating... Like, what if you're in a, an inner city and it's all black patients? Are you saying it's a bad thing to treat, like, a, a less diverse community because of where you happen to be located? Right. Because so many hospitals are like that. Yeah. They're in these different areas, and it, it's just like, it's wonderful to treat diverse people. I hate it when MAGA people come. It doesn't matter. It's a person who needs medical attention, period. Think think about where we are. These, these doctors, these institutions are saying, we have to take into account race. You have to take into account background. You have to take into account community. You have to take into account income. All we're saying is doctors treat sick patients. Spot the racism. By the way, the American Medical Association, they're also pushing for DEI and health equity. Now, again, let me be clear here. If you are doing that, then that means, first off, this is something new. Right, the idea of DEI, health equity, right? This is relatively new, and this there is an aggressive push, which would mean that they are displacing a different standard. Right? Before DEI and health equity, they're saying you need to place an emphasis on this as opposed to what? Well, this brings us to fast fact four. Medical schools, hospitals are giving far less weight now to actual test scores and objective metrics. So the Association of American Medical Colleges, they actually want less reliance on GPA, and the MCAT scores for applicants, right? They recommend a holistic <laughs> review oh, good. of med school applicants. And here's a quote. It says, that consider each applicant individually by balancing their academic met metrics with experiences and attributes. That there article said it, can, it will gradually increase the number of black students. Right. Well, they have to send in a photo of themselves. Yes, exactly. Send in a headshot. It used to be, hey, you would, we would base it. Hey, isn't there something beautiful about test scores being blind? Yes. No. Justice. Send in a headshot and let's do a face-to-face -face interview. Melanin, you're in. There's also a push to stop using um, the United States medical licensing exam, using those scores in uh, uh, taking uh, consideration. <laughs> using those scores at all. I know. I, this is true. All references available at oh In granting residency to med students. And this is why. <laughs> they say why. So, again, there is kind of, they will accuse you on the right of A or B thinking, of black or white thinking. They will accuse you of that. But hold on a second. Test scores, race. Test scores, race. <laughs> and this is their own argument. They said that using scores results in racial inequities because blacks are three to six times less likely to get a residency interview if the scores are used. So they advocate, and by the way, this should instill confidence the next Ooh. time that you have to uh, undergo anesthesia. What they advocate is rather than taking scores into consideration, just to pass or fail. <laughs> I want my white doctors to have high scores too, by the way. Yes. Uh, yes. Just yes. so you know, I, I, want, I don't want a white doctor that failed a test, okay? Uh, you're going to breathe this in, count backwards from 10. Hey, what were your test scores? My <laughs> past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Hold on, what's Jerry? the threshold? <laughs> 50, 60? Like, I don't know. Is past? <laughs> and they also, by the way, they've already uh, modified some of the rules to shrink the racial gap proactively by adding, quote, communication and interpersonal skills. Now, I'm not even sure that that's going to help black people. I'm not going to lie to you. Look, if we're going to do stuff, at yeah. least make it effective. I mean, I don't necessarily know. I think maybe that's designed to block some Asians. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Test scores, race, your life.
And Don Lemon is arguing for this as though Elon Musk is a fascist. Yeah. Think about this. This is the world we live in. This brings us to another fact, okay? Uh, the polls already show that, in case you didn't know this, you watching right now, you probably don't really care about the race of your doctor. Uh, okay, the polls show that neither does anybody else. So... <laughs> UPenn, patients who were satisfied with their doctor, uh, the number was about 87% when the doctor and patient were of the same race. The number was about 82% uh, when uh, the patient and the doctor were of a different race. Tiny, tiny difference. Statistically insignificant. But we'll kill you just because we have people out in the field that maybe don't have the right skills, but hey, we got to make up that 5%. Well, I would say that if it's 87 and 82, both are pass scores, so the so, rest is know, irrelevant. Ch change this right. to pass. That's fail. a B. It's a pass or fail. You know what? I am absolutely. You know what, Don Lemon? I'll make a deal with you right now. The, I think we should have 13% of the population from the black community be doctors. 13%, right? That's what they make up the community. As soon as you represent 13% of the violent crime in the United States, if we're going to put everything back to where it's supposed to be from every single group on every single metric that we possibly have, then let's play fair. Let's have an open field for it. every single thing has to be 13%. Otherwise, you're underrepresented or overrepresented. And we can't have that. Exactly. That's a good point. We have to enforce it. People are going to be pissed that I said that. I don't really care. Otherwise, how do we know it's fair? Unless it's 13 on the dot. On the dot. Yeah. Maybe it's 13.1. It no, 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 no. That would imply freedom of choice. No, we can't have maybe that. it's the population is 13.1. Well, I don't know. But the point is it can't be a decimal point off. Okay. Otherwise, that would imply that they have freedom of choice to choose their own careers. Also, uh, there needs to be 63% of NBA players uh, white. Uh. And sprinters. <laughs> imagine, imagine putting this into sports. <laughs> Yeah, you know at what? The Olympics, <laughs> at the Olympics, they might be 63% white. They just all lose. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sweden's not bringing home the gold, you no, know? No, yes. They're not. The Russian sprinters. <laughs> yes. To the rest of the world, the dream team is the Black Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's a very good point. To use an extreme example, okay, it's 13% of the population. We need to enforce that in the medical field, but not. All black Amer not all Hispanic Americans are going to have the aptitude to be doctors, or they may choose not to. Enforce 13% the Olympics. Swimming pool. Make it 13% black. Go. You'll have deaths. Also, a lot of uh, a lot of Hispanic people identify as white. It's like a yes. on forms it says Hispanic, and then it has, says Hispanic non-white, and a lot of people just write Hispanic. Right. Uh, uh, whatever. Or some people don't that, say I think those numbers are a little bit, a little bit off by yeah. a couple percentage. Probably. I always thought that was weird with Hispanic and Hispanic non-white. Like when you purchase a firearm, you have to state twice. Yeah, that's weird. It is weird to me. You know, that's one that I'll give to you. It seems a little discriminatory. So, what does this kind of show us here? Uh, it comes down to your worldview. Do you believe in equality, or do you believe in equity? Do you believe that uh, medical students and doctors should be determined by their scores, by their performance, or by an enforced number of equity? Do you believe that there should be a holistic meaning and approach looking at a sort of uh, unquantifiable nebulous variables or tests, performance, mortality rate? Do you agree with most Americans who don't actually care about the race of your doctor? And here's something, too. I, again, I look at this and I see something. The left sees discrimination in everything. I look at it and I say, wow, you know what? This is actually, this is actually uh, something coming to fruition. The American dream. Like I said, 14% of the United States doctors, they're Jewish. 2% of the population. Uh, yeah. you know, I think now it's actually, sorry, I misspoke earlier. I think I said three. 7% of the population is Asian. 26% of enrollees. The first doctor in the United States to separate conjoined twins was Dr. Ben Carson, who's also a professional lullaby singer. <laughs> He's very good. He's very good. <laughs> so I look, that is an example of class mobility. Yeah. And the left wants you to, 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 to well, Asians haven't... You know about the railroads? You know about the internment camps in World War II? You think in World War II, Japanese people... Sorry, no, I sound like... Ah, ah, ah. <clears throat> sound like, you, sound like you were there. You think it really... <laughs> oh, no. You haven't seen what I've seen, bro. He's doing your RFK impression. Yes. God. Sorry. I could separate conjoined twins. It's unbearable. If I had the opportunity. What? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Kennedy albatross around my neck. They wouldn't accept me to medical school. That's not true at all. No, it's not. Couldn't even be a Nick Nolte stand-in. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Despite you making up 2% of the population, gosh, think about the rate, 14% of doctors. Good for you, Jewish Americans. Despite you having probably your parents, your grandparents being put in internment camps, you now make up 26% of doctors. And look at that. Look at these exact statistics and say that's a beautiful thing. And how many of these people are immigrants? 
Exactly. Here on visas or here on... Uh, Legally. Know. I, yeah, would be, exactly. I would be willing to bet that far more of those Asian American doctors are immigrants, either first generation or second generation, than black Americans. I would be willing to bet. I don't have the statistics in front of me. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing too. The not just not the comparison, but the you know the fact that pe that that's the American dream. Yeah, come here, make a life, pass the test, don't drop out. Those numbers show that there's clearly a choice, and different groups of people make different choices. Now you can look at all of that and say. Racism. We need more blacks. That's really all Don Lemon is saying. He's not saying we need more Asians. He's not saying we need more Jews. He's not saying we need more Hispanics. He's not saying any of those things. He's not saying we need more Cuban Americans. He's not saying we need more, more Brazilian Americans. He's not saying we need more Swedish Americans. No, he's saying more blacks. Needs more blacks. With no justification other than blacks. I think that's racist. Watch Ladder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.